Trump announced his vice presidential pick, and it is Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, mm. who got a lot of popularity because of his book, Hillbilly Elegy. And he also, in a text message, said that, you know, Trump is America's Hitler. He has been very, he was very critical of Trump. He has now backtracked on all of that, and he is a Trump loyalist. I did not think it would be J.D. Vance. Um, I was wrong. Uh, Reese from the very beginning predicted it would be a uh, white man. I thought that the GOP was going to do their tokenism because they wanted someone to combat Vice President Kamala Harris. That's what they often do. Um, but it is a J.D. Vance. Uh, Reese, you've written about J.D. Vance, so in case folks don't know, give them an idea of who J.D. Vance is and what impact you think it will or will not have uh, politically. Well, yes, I did write about J.D. Vance in both of my midterms books, The Long and Short of a Guide to the 2022 Midterms. Radical Republicans was one book, and the other one was same header, but it was also must-watch races, where I contrasted uh, J.D. Vance against Tim Ryan, the Democratic opponent for Senate. And I will say that uh, J.D. Vance is one of the most vile Republicans that I wrote about, and I wrote about dozens of Republicans in both books. Um, and I, I was I was nauseated sometimes writing about him. His views on women are abhorrent. Um, he's racist as fuck, okay? Um, and there's an element of him that is certainly fraudulent, this guy is a multimillionaire venture capitalist, Yale educated elite who, you know, does have, I guess, hillbilly elegy. That's his little memoir. He has hillbilly, uh, uh, I'm using his words, not my word. He has hillbilly roots, but he pulled us up by his bootstraps, I guess. And he's a San Francisco elite. And so what he's managed to do is to kind of cosplay as this, like, every working man. He has, like, the beard, I guess. Like, I'm supposed to be, like, Paul Bunyan or some shit. And he's managed to kind of reinvent himself as a man of the people. And of the people, I mean white working class, white rural people. But the reality is this man is just really all about power. And he made the correct calculation. He made the correct calculation that there wasn't really a path to power being a never Trumper and that the way to, 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 to catapult himself was to ingratiate himself, kiss as much Donald Trump MAGA ass as possible. And it's paid off for him in terms of being the nominee. What I want to focus less on is the fact that, yes, he has said negative things about Donald Trump. The MAGA people don't care about that, okay? They don't. They're like, well, he changed his mind. Be good, I'll change your mind. Oh, okay, that's cool. What I want to focus on is his own abhorrent views. This is the person that believes that women should not be allowed to leave abusive marriages. Um, who likened leaving a, a divorcing to changing your underwear. Women, you know, change husbands like they change underwear. That said that, well, you know, if your mama's getting beat up, I mean, you know, if she leaves, yeah, that might've been good for her, but I don't know, maybe it's not good for her, but what about you? What the fuck you mean? How could it not be good to leave an abusive marriage? That's unhinged. That is unhinged. This is not a person that, oh, this person is 80 years old and he said this shit 40 years ago. Like he was saying this and it's on camera a couple years ago. Um, so he's he in his campaign ad, he said, Are you a racist? Do you hate Mexicans? That's a quote from his campaign ad. Okay. He um is for a national abortion ban, even in cases of rape and incest, which tracks as a person who um believes that women shouldn't be allowed to use to leave abusive marriages. He, um, you know, has claimed that Democrats are trying to import voters, you know, a, what he called, characterized as, as illegals. I don't like to use that word. He subscribes to the great replacement theory, the same theory that animated the Buffalo terrorist mass shooter. Buffalo, if you don't remember, was when I believe it was 12 
Black people were gunned down in the grocery stores, mostly grandpas and grandmas. Old elder Black people gunned down in a grocery store. This is the coward. In, yeah, in Buffalo, New York. He's anti-LGBTQ. He's anti-civil um, rights. There are so many things that I wrote about that are disturbing, okay? He he said if, if a woman is raped and she wants to get um, an abortion, two wrongs don't make a right. That's a direct quote from him. And he um, he stood by these things. He stood by it. He didn't say, oh, well, you know, I was, I was mis... Um, he didn't say I was misquoted. He said that people's reactions were disinformation. But the reality of it is this person cannot be trusted on any measure, on any measure, unless you're in the KKK, then maybe you can trust him. But a, a, a Black person, a minority, a person of color, fuck no. Fuck no. You would be crazy to, to, to support this person. Um, and... You know, Donald Trump has dodged a lot of bullets with uh, all of these court cases and stuff. So it doesn't look like he's going to be held to account. So maybe his prospect of being in jail is very little to none. But this is who would potentially be the 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 future of the Republican Party. It's part of this movement they're calling the new right, um, which is basically the young, crazy ass white Republicans in the Senate. OK, who are even more extreme than MAGA. So. What I think this does is I think initially the mainstream media is going to focus on, oh, he's 39 years old. He's young. Donald Trump is old. People are concerned about Donald Trump being old. He's now 39? Have, yeah, he's 39. I know he look a little older than 39, but he, oh, he's 39 okay. years old. I didn't realize he was 30. Oh. 39. That's it. That's oh. young. Okay. He don't look 39 to me. He look a little older, but okay, he's 39. I didn't know he was 39. Uh huh. Um, They're going to try to prop up his uh, Indian wife as some evidence of him being inclusive or the Republican Party being inclusive, even though he's very hostile, very xenophobic, and very racist. So I don't know what kind of Stockholm syndrome her ass has, but come on. But once people get past the optics of it, the, the theater of it, and if we actually get to the point where people are examining his record, his his record is abhorrent. You know, they're going to try to say, oh, well, he co-sponsored a bill with Elizabeth Warren. And oh, they're going to try to bring up those things. And he joined the picket line. The reality of it is this person is as extreme as it gets and just morally, ethically vile. I want to also add for folks who care about education, he has admired uh, Viktor Orban. Uh, the prime minister of Hungary, mm -hmm. uh, his stance on uh, attacking public univers uh, universities, which is what Viktor Orban is doing. And J.D. Vance has admired that, uh, which is pretty sick. He's also been on that critical race theory rant. Uh, yep. He's made a lot of bizarre comments. I know people don't use critical race theory anymore. They've kind of sucked that dry. Mm -hmm. um, but he 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 accused uh, COVID-19 policies he went after schools for their COVID-19 policies and accused them of teaching critical race theory. Mm -hmm. uh, he's made those weird DEI comments. He called DEI racism, plain and simple, in a tweet just last month. Uh, this man is pretty terrible, but it goes right in line with, uh, with the base. And I hope that it's really clear to people what the options are, what the choices are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Do you think this will have it? Will this incentivize Democratic voters, Reese? Do you think it I think will it wake will. people up? I definitely think mm. it will. I think that um, I one thing I will say, I do appreciate that uh, President Biden said that he's Trump's clone. I think that's that's very clever and, and, and appropriate because not only does that tie J.D. Vance to, to Trump more, but it also tries, ties Trump to J.D. Vance's very, very recent inflammatory, vile, disgusting comments as well. Trump has been trying to moderate his stance, even though it's still extreme, but he's been trying to act like he 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 has um he's gonna take a more hands-off approach to abortion going forward. But JD Vance is as extreme as it gets when it comes to the issue of abortion. So I definitely um I, I definitely think that 
this hurts him in terms of um, any ability to expand beyond the base. It's doubling down on the base. I don't know why you double down on people who are cultish like in your corner, especially after being shot at. Like if you after you being shot at, you don't have to worry. You gonna bring out one hundred percent of the MAGA people. Like you ain't got to worry about that. You know, you would think that he would have if he was being strategic, tried to get somebody that gives maybe gives him an inch outside of the base. This is a pure, unadulterated base uh, pick. There's no appeal beyond that if people look at the issues. And so that's what we have a responsibility to do is to make sure that people look at the issues. Another couple of things I just want to point out. He said that the George Floyd Justice and, police, uh, uh, and BLM protests were primarily violent. That's one of the things that he said. He said that um, ins that insurance companies were were supporting BLM so that they can get richer from property damage. Just absurd things. He's one of those people that just characterizes Black people as being violent. Um, and uh, he's he just, it, the racism is, it, I mean, he has racist thoughts on healthcare. He has racist thoughts on the economy, on gun control, on reproductive rights. Like, I'm like, Damn, you know, when I was covering the Republicans, there are people who had racist shit and I usually just was able to fit it in the civil rights area. Every aspect of every every section that I covered them on, I covered them on the economy, education, healthcare, gun rights, reproductive rights or gun control. And he was racist. Every, every paragraph is like, he's racist. I'm like, damn, this man is crazy. This is nuts. So any uh, anybody who's impressed by the barbershop and Amber Rose with her dumbass tattoo or the cigars and cognac, anybody that's impressed by that shit, listen to the kind of stuff that J.D. Vance says. You will definitely think twice about putting him in second command to Donald Trump. The racism just showed up in every passage about him. So in healthcare, I talked about his sole reference to Medicare was to again complain about the attempts to address systemic inequities in the healthcare system. He believes that the healthcare system is racist towards white people. How absurd is that, right? Anyway, it says, without irony, Vance took issue with Medicare grants leading to providing people with better care because they have the right skin color. That's his quote. He says that Medicare, Medicare grants would lead to providing people with better care because they have the right skin color. And he was not referring to white people. He was saying that Medicare grants lead to Black people getting better care because Black people have the right skin color. That is the exact opposite of every kind of medical research says. I mean, when we have a country where the Black maternal mortality rate is three times that of white women, it's even worse when you're looking at Native American women. It's, it's, it's equally as bad when you're looking at Latina women. We have an, the Black infant mortality is, 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 is astronomical compared to white infants. Black people have higher... Uh, disparate incomes in every aspect of healthcare, and this is a person that is opposed to Medicare grants that seek to rectify those inequities. And so, it really is about dismantling, not just saying we want to be neutral. It's it goes back to the fearless fund we've talked about that at Blooms. They don't want to things to be neutral. They want to dismantle any attempts at trying to rectify inequities and disparities on every level. And I'm telling you, they were leaving no stone unturned. He's closely aligned with the Project 2025 people. He's close friends with uh, Russ Vaught, who is rumored to be in the running for chief of staff for Donald Trump, who's an architect of Project 2025, and Kevin Roberts, who's of the Heritage Fund uh, Foundation. So this person is deeply dangerous. Don't be mistaken by his flip-flopping and how they're going to make him out to be a hypocrite. This is a deeply, deeply dangerous pick from Donald Trump.